What's up everybody, Let's Talk Jets Radio. Real quick video here. I'm gonna do my best to remain calm, but it's probably not gonna happen because I was told repeatedly last night that I needed to wait until 12 o'clock, four o'clock today for all these waiver claims that Joe Douglas was gonna make. And in fairness, I, I thought he was gonna make a bunch of moves today. I didn't think that half these guys that survived the initial uh, cuts that we were talking about last night, Nathan Shepard, you know, Ty Johnson, uh, Ashton Davis, a bunch of these guys, I didn't think they were gonna make it. And then one by one, you start seeing all of these guys that we were really excited about that we were hoping we would be able to get back on the practice squad. One by one, all of these guys start to get claimed. Jason Pinnock to the Giants, Javelin Guidry to the Cardinals, Wesco to the Bears, Phillips, uh, Delshawn Phillips to the Ravens. I'm, I'm sure they're going to get some info out of him for week one. Uh, Chuma Adoga, he goes to the Falcons. And then you got Wild Goose to Washington and Isaiah Dunn to Seattle. So, the Jets ultimately lost three corners, and they only have five right now, and they don't have anybody to, to back up Michael Carter if he goes down in the slot. They got rid of one of their safeties who was getting work with the ones, and instead now they still have Ashton Davis. They don't currently have a backup offensive tackle on the roster other than Max Mitchell, who is a rookie, who does not have any experience in real NFL games. They have three, uh, sorry, four linebackers on the roster. Maybe you can get away with that. They have 11 defensive linemen. Nathan Shepard's still there. Vinny Curry, great pro, but what has he done in the Jets uniform? Not getting any younger, not part of your future. So what exactly are we doing here? You know, I, I keep seeing that this is a great thing because it means that the Jets roster has improved, that the Jets roster is so much better that they had to get rid of good players. That's what everybody keeps telling me. So, was Ashton Davis a part of this team last year? Oh, he was. Okay. Was Nathan Shepard here last year? Oh, he was too. Okay. Ty Johnson, he was fucking here too. So, we get rid of all these guys that we're starting to get excited about. We keep the same fucking guys that were here last year. And somehow we're spinning it that these roster cuts were because the Jets roster improved. Like, what are we talking about? These are the same fucking players that were here last year. Ty Johnson was a Jet. We complained about him on every fucking stream. Nathan Shepard penalties every fucking game. Vinnie Curry's not been on the field. Ashton Davis is fucking horrible. They all survived. How? How? And Pinnock's gone? Why? They were hyping him up all summer. Now you cut him? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And there's another problem here, too. As I'm pulling in my driveway, I'll try to calm down. The Jets right now are over the cap. They don't have any money. So I, I keep also seeing that, oh, you know, the Jets aren't going to do the waiver claim thing. They're just going to claim some veterans, or they're just going to sign some veterans. Well, what is your sales pitch for a veteran right now? What is your sales pitch? You don't have any money. And you're not exactly a, a Super Bowl contender right now. You're, you're still trying to turn that corner from rebuild to a competitive football team. So you're 2.4 or 2.6 million over the cap. You don't have money to, to really give anybody, or at least not any serious money. So either you have to release somebody like a, a Justin Hardy and save 2 million bucks, or you got to restructure somebody, which is ultimately going to push more money down the line in the future and guarantee more money. So you start looking at next year's salary cap situation. Right now, they only have 2 million in cap space for next year. There are a bunch of guys that they can cut, but then those are guys that you have to replace. A lot of those guys also have dead money attached to them. So, I mean, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of things. I know this is only the back end of the roster, but the arguments that I keep seeing are that this was a good thing because the, the, the back end of the Jets roster has improved, and I need to know how that is possible when we're keeping the same depth players. So how did the roster improve? How does Jason Pinnock getting cut and all these other guys that, that are now getting claimed that are apparently good players, other teams view them as good players, but we didn't view anybody else around the league with our fourth waiver claim. We had, we had fourth priority. So for all the talent that got released, all the guys that got picked up today, the Jets didn't want anybody? There, there was nobody that we felt could improve this roster? In spite of the obvious shortcomings, backup tackle, slot corner, 
possibly linebacker, and a safety. Those are needs right now on the back end. Possibly even starters. Lamarcus Joyner is not a guarantee. Fant coming off surgery. Dwayne Brown, 37 years old. Like, these guys are not exactly locks. You need to have some insurance. And so, like, where is it coming from? They Like, why not keep Chuma Adoga? I, 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 listen, I understand. He's not the best tackle prospect out there. He's got game experience. When he went in there last year, the offensive line wasn't terrible. We were able to move the ball. So, I mean, like, who do you feel better with? Chuma Adoga, if somebody gets hurt, or Max Mitchell? I know it's not a popular name, but I'm taking Adoga, at least right now. Uh, until, Mitch, until Mitchell gets a, a year under his belt, some experience. I'm not putting him out there and getting my rookie quarterback or my second-year quarterback killed. So I got a lot of questions. I know some moves can still happen. But again, I'm wondering, like, where is it coming from with what, caps, uh, with what cap space and with what sales pitch? And again, how do you still justify the guys that were cut in favor of the guys that are still on your roster right now? Because there's a very good chance you could have cut Shepard or Ashton Davis or Ty Johnson and nobody would have fucking touched them. So, I don't know. Somebody cheer me up. Somebody talk some sense into me in the comments. I'll talk to you guys later and try to calm down.